and welcome back everybody thank you so much for joining us here at three kobolds gaming for our seventh episode of heroes of absalom uh, we are so excited to keep bringing this story to you uh, but just a quick reminder if you haven't already uh, we'd super appreciate you all following us on twitch uh, here on twitch as well as on twitter and instagram um, our social medias have some really awesome like behind the scenes stuff uh, going on so definitely be sure to check out our instagram and twitter for that content um yeah i think that's that's all i have for today um tell your friends man yeah <laughs> people, <laughs> people need to know people need the, the people deserve to know really they deserve yeah. this story in their lives and we would love it if it, you all asked your friends just to just to give us a watch um also be keeping your eye out on our social media as we will have youtube videos up in the very near future of all of our past uh, episodes so that people can go back and watch or watch for the first time in order to catch up with the live show. So let's jump back into our Heroes of Absalom story. We're doing this? Oh, are we doing this? Oh, we're doing well, this. Though. Heroes so far. <laughs> <laughs> You guys have met at least <laughs> one hero. We're going to yeah, find out who the heroes of Absalom met, really are. We, we've yeah. met a hero of Absalom, potentially. <laughs> we return to our plucky platoon of persistent pugilists as they finally <laughs> get the chance to wind down from their action-packed first day of the Radiant Festival. The worst. Having fought, <laughs> off, having fought off the majority of the raging menagerie beasts, they enlist the help of a mysterious woman clad in armor to aid them in incapacitating the last creature, a massive oncrob known only as That Bastard. Once it was downed, the woman introduced herself as Isabella and asked to meet them later that night at the Tipsy Tango. She goes on her way, and the group sets about helping to reorganize Knight's Menagerie, getting the creatures back in their cage, cages, and essentially making sure that these this group is ready to pack up and move out because Remy informs them that with the animals in the condition that they're in uh, and with the almost certain negative publicity that they're going to get, they can't really stay for the Radiant Festival anymore. They're not going to have any money to pay anybody. Uh, they're basically only going to be able to take care of what they've already got. And so Remy, the lead zoo keeper... Uh, is taking the menagerie to Taldor, uh, the a country to the east uh, of Absalom. Uh, but with that, the group's jobs uh, are kind of up in the air, as they are no longer employed by the menagerie. Um, they it's tough economy, okay, Will? Yeah, yeah. it's 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 a tough day. Uh, tough tough day. living out there. Uh, <laughs> after. Finishing up at the menagerie, the group takes a moment to collect their thoughts as well as collect some items uh, in the form of scrolls to hopefully increase their uh, abilities uh, further. Eventually, after stocking up on these supplies and discussing the events of the day, uh, they arrive at the Tipsy Tengu to attend to their meeting with Isabella. Now you all enter the Tipsy Tengu, and unlike what was literally for these characters last night, uh, where it was pretty um, low energy, not too many people, and eventually the the uh, brawl uh, ensued after the uh, other adventuring group got a little too rambunctious. Uh, tonight, the Tipsy Tengu is quite energetic, and lively, there is a woman singing and playing a lute uh, in one of the corners. Uh, two of the tables are majority filled. There's a number of uh, about a dozen uh, patrons uh, dotted throughout this establishment, uh, and it is it is not by any means a a large um, tavern. Uh, max capacity is probably somewhere closer to to about twenty to twenty five, not counting you know serving staff. And so the energy is, is up. Uh, it is a bit raucous. You can feel a continuation of this kind of, of festival energy 
that you all have experienced as you've been traveling through the Precipice Quarter today. Uh, as people are either, you know, getting ready to wind their nights down and are spending some time with their friends before splitting up and heading back to bed, or just getting their nights started uh, to continue their celebration of the Radiant Festival well into the night, uh, you all arrive roughly around um, 9 o'clock, uh, just before your, your scheduled meeting with Isabella. And upon entering uh, and noticing the environments you see Isabella seated at the end of the bar, uh, Belbury attending to her with a glass of what appears to be wine. And unlike uh, the armored figure uh, with an imposing halberd and a uh, sturdy stance that you had seen on the battlefield prior, you see uh, a woman now hair down um, with a kind of uh, blue, turquoise blue surcoat uh, and um, faintly, uh, lightly embroidered chemise uh, sitting there um, while not resplendent in fineries. It is obvious that her tailor uh, was very skilled. She looks uh, well composed, put together, uh, much more uh, subdued than the imposing presence of the woman that you had seen prior and she notices your entrance uh, and gives a smile to the group uh, who she is eager, apparently, to see. And she motions for you all to join her and gives another uh, nod to Belbury, who quickly uh, and deftly secures five more, uh, five more flagons of ale for you all what would you like to do shark turns to bear and says uh brother it appears as though this establishment is illuminated by fire uh, or some kind of flickering fire light it is lit oh my god <laughs> right off the bat <laughs> Yes, Shock. but it's you have... that before we walked in here, the two of you. Shark, you have set a record for the quickest amount of time for me to be absolutely sick of your shit. <laughs> <laughs> You've really outdone yourself this time. Uh, Shark will approach the bar. Yeah, um, the, do the doctor leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Walks out of the whole tipsy tank. Yeah, it's really my bad for thinking that that was going somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, as Bastro is walking to the bar, um, can you roll perception to see like what kind of crowd is is in the bar right now? Sure, go ahead. Oh yeah, good, good, good thought, good thought. Mm -hmm. Ooh, a natty nineteen. Let me see what that is total. Ba -ba -ba. I've written down somewhere. It's gonna be a uh, twenty-five. Yeah, uh, the crowd seems to be a mixture of various peoples. I mean, you see uh, the same man who was. Uh, passed out on the table uh, and the night prior is once again going about a, um, a merry you know reverie in his drink uh, kind of gest gesticulating towards nobody as he continues to down another flagon of ale uh, but he's awake this time uh, you see a number of an improvement uh, you okay. see what, what appear to be like a number of um, like mercenary types, they look to be uh having at the at the table farthest from the bar, uh, a group of the like, kind of rougher um, you know, gentlemen and uh ladies who are speaking with someone who appears to be uh a scholar scholarly figure, um, but they're you know being respectful. They're not too rambunctious. There's a couple. Uh, seated on the table farthest from the door, uh, who appear to be just enjoying a, a night out. Um, like I said, there's a lot of energy in the room, but it doesn't seem to be like anything like the the raucous occasion that was your prior visit. Let me just the morning. Yeah. <laughs> um, I go over to Belbury and say, Belbury, your finest or most adequate ale, whichever you think I would like better. Oh, well, 
I'd be saying they're quite the same thing, but, um, well, here you are. Fabulous! As she already had, uh, five, um, tankards ready to go for you all, uh, seated, uh, at the various empty seats, uh, that were adjacent to Isabella. And Isabella welcomes you all. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I understand that our last meeting was a bit hectic, but... Uh, I'm glad that this this city has others who are looking out for the common folk. Um, well, we were just happy to have your help. <laughs> well, I wish I could have done more, but you all, well, you all arrived well before I did. Well, you arrived just in time, so we greatly appreciate the next round. you arriving when you did. Yes. <laughs> Well, as I understand from my brief conversation with Remy, it appears you all are out of work, and I don't mean to be presumptuous, but I believe that I have use for skilled uh, persons such as yourselves. Um, there are some things in this city that should be attended to that are slipping through the cracks. You aren't going to ask us to uh, beat up everyone in this bar and throw them out, are you? That's what happened at our last job offer, and it was a little strange. Uh, I should think not. Everyone appears to be behaving themselves. Just want to wow. check. We've had, a, we've had a hell of a day. Who knows what's happening? I can only um, imagine. Isabella, would you mind telling us a bit more about what this would entail? Well, actually, first, I'd like to ask you all some questions. Um, an interview, shall we call it? <laughs> Job interview. <laughs> would you like us all at one time, or would you like us to step out of the room for a moment? Um, I'll go first. Well, let me let me find my director of HR and get him in. There. <laughs> uh, no, I, just answer how you will. Um, is, I, I, is it okay if I take uh, take some notes? I'm gonna, uh, I'll be looking down, but I'll be paying attention. You know. You know how it goes. Sure, sure, of course. I can't quite hear you from over here. Could you could you speak up a bit? <laughs> um, I think this conversation would be best kept away from the entirety of the bar. Um, if you'd rather join us over here. Oh, oh, all right. There are two seats left. I can hear you quite fine from over here. He is making a point to sit like a little bit further away from everybody else. Fair enough, I suppose. Always one. Weirdo. I suppose my first question would be what specifically prompted you all to rush into such a dangerous situation? Other than the fact that we were hired to... Um, other than the fact that we were hired help for Mr. Knight. Well, sure, but so was Remy and... So were the rest of the menagerie staff. I mean, I can't imagine you were specifically hired to quell an insurrection of beasts. Oh, no. Um, actually, I was hired to bring guests in and to dance on the streets. So certainly not. But, um, so everything's an improvement. <laughs> uh, well, when we first got there, we heard screaming. And I guess we just immediately jumped into action. You know, we just... We just followed our hearts and made our way made our way to make sure that others were safe. Hmm. But, and well, I don't that know. was our job. I don't know That's if I should right. have followed my heart uh, as much as I kind of lack, uh, a, let's say, a normal will to live. I have a sub-normal <laughs> will to live. Well, some and, of us uh, followed our hearts. <laughs> I didn't have much better to do at the time. Um, I'm all out of reagents for the day, so uh, tomorrow will be, you know, a different story. And Isabella, there's all good things that we all mention, but one thing is being overlooked in the case of Shark and myself, and that is the ancestral enemy of the goblins. Horses? The, the rust monster. <laughs> oh, what, I... uh, what, what was that, uh, Penumbra? We couldn't hear you. Yes. Oh, Could sorry, you speak up sorry, harder? sorry. The ancestral enemy no, I want, uh, one, of the, the goblins. Friend of me? Frenemies? Your frenemies with the goblins. Oh, oh Jesus. 
walks all the way over. <laughs> Saunters out of his high chair. He's like three feet tall. He just like waddles over. Oh the my rust. God. We hate rust monsters. If not in history, then certainly now. Is that rust. so? Well, rust, Rusty certainly got on my nerves. I'm very glad to have well, members of the various goblin tribes to educate me. I had always assumed, maybe incorrectly, that your ancestral enemies were horses and dogs, but... Well, if you I... had to make a top three, they would all crack it. Ah. <laughs> well, I'm happy to be learning. Thank you. Personally, um, you know, the reason I jumped in was because the job had to be done. And I knew that um, my friends would take care of me and I would take care of them and that we would get the job done. I don't know about the rest of you, but that's how I felt. No, that is, that is reassuring. Another question for you. Um, how many of you are just here for the for the festival, and how many of you live here? Well, well I live here. Do we need like a permanent proof of address, or is it more of like a? <laughs> if you have a now. check that's been mailed to your place of residence, that would be. Uh, or I, a press I, I don't have a ID, check. Perhaps. Uh, Quarter. I ID. do have. I do have a library card for the library up the street from Shark's apartment. I'm sorry, this one is expired. Penumbra. I knew there was something I was supposed to do last night. <laughs> um, Next so... episode on Heroes of Absalom, we renew <laughs> Penumbra's library. <laughs> this one with photo ID. Uh, you're just sitting there for three hours as somebody sketches out a, <laughs> a portrait of you on a tiny card. A classic DMV style episode. Oh yes, uh, what the fans really want. Try our thing, gameplay. I've asked you to stop smiling six times now. That's all right. It's not a smile; it's a goblin grin. Isn't that right, Shark? Anyway, this is this joke is played out. Uh, so the problem I don't, is... I don't live here, but Shark does, and I'm staying with him for the time being. Not only for the festival. And uh... the others. I am. Um, I did grow up in Absalom, but I have been gone for a while. But I am clearly back again, um, for the time being, at least. I am. I am from Absalom, though I am. I am on the move recently, hence hey. this new position. I'm not from Absalom. I don't live around here, but uh, I did want to come here just to experience the big city. You know, it's my first big city, hmm. and I was just lucky enough to come for th during the time of the festival. I should say well, that. Every day is like the day we've had today, Bastro. Uh -huh. Every day you fight skeletons and <laughs> all the nonsense we've done. And yes. everything in the big city. Simply to make your grocery run, there are at least six skeletons in your path. <laughs> no, I understand that this is that's a strange question I suppose but I should say that I am in the business of returning missing persons to their rightful places we have a missing person <laughs> I heard that uh, and Knight and Minera were apparently reported at least absent. We heard they were banging. We did. Well, that's exactly what we heard. So maybe that, maybe they won't make it onto my list then. They are uh, missing uh, together, if you know what I mean. Yeah. A classic case of the ghost and the pumpkin, as we call it back home. <laughs> <laughs> And I should I'm say, I'm not familiar with that. Wait, hold on. I'm not familiar with that goblin idiot. I want to really dive into that. Just, uh, just dig into I that really turn of phrase. This, yeah. uh, I agree with Twinkle Toes. Uh, who is this pumpkin and who is the goblin? And in the, in the idiom, who's who? Uh, it is a goblin phrase you probably don't understand. Pumpkin it can only be. Pumpkins are used for something very different back in Verusa. It can only be communicated as part of a 20 ensemble goblin play, and we don't have nearly enough goblins to perform it. <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised how many goblins I could be. <laughs> I. Why are 
mean what? <laughs> exactly one. <laughs> One that rather... Shark and Penumbra play the Ghost of the Pumpkin, and Twinkle Toes plays all 18 other supporting <laughs> roles. Oh, God. <laughs> I understand this is a strange question. Uh, but as I said, I search for missing persons, and while cities, especially Absalom, tend to have, unfortunately, people go missing all the time, what with the size and the sheer scale... There have been a number of cases over the past month that I feel are connected in some way, and I have become overwhelmed. Nearly 20 people, uh, none of whom, not a single one, has been a resident of Absalom, have gone just missing in the past month. And... Well, I'm starting to fray at the ends of my rope to say, trying to track and trace all of these leads. And, well, when I heard about the menagerie outbreak, I rushed to help who I could, only to find you all had already mostly sewn up every every creature there, already taken them down. Now, I'm, I'm say... sorry, I don't think we understand quite yet uh, who you are and what position you are to offer us a job. What 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 organization is this uh, this fishy mess on your armor uh, representative of? Hmm. That, I will admit, is a rather tough question for me to answer for you at this point i'm not well please do do try because before we can... sold on whether i can trust you yet well before we can start talking about missing people and what they have to do what we can do for them shock is is right we need to know who well, you I are can trust you although like i am inclined to trust you because you're very attractive um but <laughs> uh... i'm inclined to trust you because you saved our asses back at the menagerie. That's what I said. That's what I just said. Um, no, I'm a twinkle toes. She's very hot. How about this? I promise that if you help me with one of the locations that I have yet to crack, I will tell you anything you wish to know about who I am and who I work with. I, I don't know if that's normally how employment contracts work. I think no, normally... I'm all right with it. I'm okay so with it. like a work interview. Yes, you, you start, you have a trial period where you... Consider it your internship. Go forward. Dr. Forsyth, do you have something better to be doing tomorrow? As, I, as far as I understand, we were just fired, so um, we might as well. Fired is a bit harsh. I think we would let go. Uh, we were let go. Thank you, Dr. Forsyth. Our, we our let corporation go. dissolved and we were yes. not part of the rebuilding. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Yes. The pumpkin disappeared into the pumpkin patch, if you will. And the ghost was left all alone. Yes, uh, Shark, I've seen the play multiple times. <laughs> I'm well aware of the story. I'm not. Can you please tell me more? I'm uh, telling one, you. So once we find 18 so, other goblins, we will well, tell you the whole thing. We will perform eventually, the whole thing. eventually, you will get the whole story. I yeah. have a couple of things that I need help with. Mainly that there was an incident at the Dragonfly Pagoda. Apparently, five of the stonemasons from Minkai, the delegation that is putting the pagoda together, have disappeared all on the same night. And all of a sudden, as of a few hours ago, some of the crew that was brought on are apparently now holding other members of the other members of the work crews hostage. And the city seems to be doing nothing about it. They claim that it is outside of their legal jurisdiction. Okay, so you're not with the city. <sighs> Uh, and I, unfortunately, was going to take care of this, but even more strangely, today, apparently, while we were at the menagerie, one of the exhibits 
the grave raker mysteriously disappeared amongst a crowd in front of the, hundreds of the, people. The what? The grave? The grave raker, a massive digging machine, another one of the Radiant Festival uh, exhibits. The grave raker? Didn't, grave wasn't there just a big raker? Grave with a V. Yes. G -R -A -V. As if it would rake graves into the ground. Yes, I understand that. Wasn't there just like a big undead attack on this city like a year ago? Um, why why would you bring something ago. into the city that rakes up graves? That sounds like a terrible idea. Well, I'm not part of the planning committee. You can ask anyway. That. Right, Please so this continue. so this grape breaker goes missing and we have to then find it. Is that what the mission is? No, you all will be going to the Dragonfly Pagoda while I take care of trying to figure out what happened to the grape breaker. We we go, we will deal with the grace robber and then we go talk to the crew members. No, these are two entirely separate instances. One at the Dragonfly Pagoda, which is where I would like you all to go and handle this situation. Mm -hmm. And I and will be... You'll be dealing with the Great Raker. The Grave Raker. Right, okay. Uh, yes, the Great Raver, yes. Mm, yes. <laughs> Precisely. So after you deal with the Green Goblin, what do we do? Find a radioactive spider? I'm not quite sure. Yes. So you said there was a crew holding other crew hostage. What, like, what specifies one crew from another? Uh, like, well, the ones doing the hostage holding are a group of, of well, kobolds who are kobolds, uh, uh, hired from one of the various tribes, apparently. Kobolds, you say? Kobolds, precisely. H have Looking they made any demands? I'm not quite sure. All I know is that this is currently happening. Um... So we're in an active hostage situation, is what you're saying? Yes and no. They don't seem to be really doing anything. They've just barricaded the place. No threats, as as Dr. Forsyth recommended. No demands, no threats, no actions. Just holding the land. It, it just seems to be that they are... I mean, it might be a worker's strike. So five, be... five Kai disappeared. Yes. And then some of the crew took the other crew hostage, and that's all you know? That's all I am aware of at this moment, yes. Do you believe the situation with the Minkai and the Kobolds to be related to your, your deal with the Grain Maker, or is that a more of a separate... Are these I, independent? They appear to be independent. Uh, but if you find anything mm. out while you're there, I would certainly be interested in knowing. I'm not so sure they are independent. Dr. Forsyth, what do you think? Uh, they seem potentially connected. It's, it's an odd... It's an odd thing. Uh, do you think they're connected because she mentioned them in the same conversation? Yes, it could, it could have just... No, been... I think they're connected for other reasons. And then Penumbra just sort of like steps away and it's as if someone else should take over the investigation now. <laughs> <laughs> well, since your private agency does not seem capable of handling both situations, I can assume that uh, perhaps there will be something in it for us. Uh, uh... Are you going to pay us? Oh, I thought you were asking her on a date for a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm not smooth enough to do that. No, that comes uh, later. Once we're friends, then I can ask her out. Um. All right. Um. Well. Yes and no. See, it's more of whether or not you can figure out where these workers went this is merely the first step uh, to finding them is to ask around the workers who are now apparently trapped in their own exhibits if you manage to find out any information and can locate these missing peoples then by all means we'll talk payment all right group group uh, should we have a group huddle i feel like the right thing to do about now sure um, one last thing, Isabella. Um, no, I already called for the group huddle. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. I, I think I think you can ask one more thing. I, oh, I'm okay. Here. Isabella, our resources are tapped. I assume you did not mean for us to go today. No. Um, like I said, they haven't made any demands or anything. And... So we, we aren't concerned about these Minkai. As you mentioned, they are relatively safe, and we can, this can wait for the morrow. I'm... Uh, 
as far as we can tell, the kobolds blockaded the door and have since been quiet. I'm not sure. If something needs to happen, I'm sure the Minkai delegation can sort it out. I really just need the information. The hostage situation is, well, secondary, really. How very personable of you. He takes a step into the huddle. All right, team. Well, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't like going into a job without guaranteed fame. Excuse, excuse me, you could, could you take a step to your left? It, this is this is a team huddle. I mean, seriously, it's just like invading a team huddle over here. It's about, please, privacy. You're right in our team I'm huddle. I'm sorry, I was seated here before you got here. You're more than welcome Scoot. to make your huddle anywhere else. Scoot, scoot. Okay. I know um, this is... This is a secure location, yes. Oh, I know what are we talking about? Bellberry, like, fishy. pops her head over the... <laughs> over Get the out of here! Team huddle only! Actually, well, right then. The I'll be going off my way. <laughs> it's very fishy, and I don't like not having guaranteed payment at the end of this, but... I, I... would die for her, so I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, um... <laughs> Could I roll a, uh, like, a sense motive on... Uh, with the general conversation. I'll do that too. That's a good idea. Um, uh, sure, that is going to be a perception check. Is there anything specific that you're looking for? So I am, I, I am sus of the I don't know how to tell you what the insignia on my armor means. Usually that's a pretty cut and dry answer. Yeah, um, that was weird. I am I mean, also sus of her. Uh, I want to see if she's with withholding any information about the situation based on our questioning specifically. Sure. Can I roll a those, those, those two things, if I could just like roll one sense motive for that. Uh, Can I roll recall knowledge on her insignia? We uh, tried that earlier. Somebody and tried that, but I don't think everybody did. I, don't think I, I tried, I, roll, I remember it failed. Can I, just, I roll yeah. a diplomacy to flirt? You, could just, get out. you don't have to roll, you could just try flirting with her. I was. No, no, that's much too difficult. We, if we if we could, we would do there already. Can uh, I roll a cultism? <laughs> 16 on the sense motive perception. She, as far as you can tell, appears to be, while not exceptionally forthright about herself um, and, like, her whole situation. Uh, she, it feels like she did tell you what she knew about the job in terms of why she might be withholding or her feeling specifically about you all you're not quite really able to tell okay the job oh information though was not there was no like dodging questions yeah there was almost like a, a answers. there was like a distinct like switch and in intonation between yeah. like the interview portion and then her laying out the the current predicament she does yeah. seem flustered and a little bit like when she was mentioning the Grave Raker and this situation at the Dragonfly Pagoda, uh, she did seem like, like frustrated. Um, sat like somebody who is like sincerely asking for help because they're in over yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, I rolled a five I... perception, by the way. Just in case. <laughs> Could I roll a sense motive to see um, if she is like eyeing any one of us in particular uh that would just be more of a perception check as opposed to a sense motive okay can i yeah, do that you, wait you eyeing in a sexy way or in a like i don't trust that person way in a sexy way <laughs> obviously welcome to npr corner the sexy eyeing corner i rolled a NPR jar jar <laughs> what'd you get on that 17 17 um she appears to just be holding a conversation more so than anything else making good eye contact with those that she is speaking to and those who are speaking to her um, her body language isn't like directed towards one person in particular not really she <laughs> she seems really. to be approaching the situation <laughs> as potential co-workers in a very professional manner dumb oh, stupid. stupid no longer interested you guys think that we should ask her about night or, or also about um, I have his name written down. Wait, Char, can I get to the get the deal? play? <laughs> um, Knight or who was it? Uh, Commander Deal, the Unis's master. 
Kamenolis. Yeah, we should ask guy. about Kamenolis. Well, like, yeah, yeah. Kamenolis may be one of the people who's gone missing. Isabella might also serve as our person we find to take care of Eunice. Yeah, to find yeah that's person. another point. Yeah. You left Eunice that's at the grocer. Good point. Yeah, you know, <laughs> we've taken care of we've you. We've taken but, care of But just in case that boy wizard in training doesn't enjoy his life of blue collar grocery work, we might let Isabella know that there is a boy missing his master. Um, That's a good idea. On like a side quest rather than a main quest basis. Could I roll a recall knowledge uh, society about uh, these kobolds and, you know, what. Like, if I've heard anything about them in Absalom, mm -hmm. you know... What a, what a kobold is. <laughs> Could sure. I do the same thing, but with Absalom lore? Sure. Absolutely. Oh, I have that, too. I'll roll that. Oh, that's actually a good roll. All right. Uh, 23. 20, 23. 16 for me. 16. Mine's not better. Uh, so, actually, both Twinkletoes and Dr. Forsyth are familiar with a... A uh, rather sizable tribe of kobolds uh, that lives under specifically the Precipice Quarter. Um, there are a number of kobold tribes who have been granted, um, I don't want to say land because that isn't really, they've been granted access to the sewers, uh, which are pretty favorable for them uh, because they take care of a lot of the, uh, dangerous things that might crawl up into and out of the sewers. They dispose of a lot of waste um, and they are more than happy making camps and essentially many tribes and civilizations in these swamp-esque kind of regions underneath and in the sewers of, of Absalom. Um, the, again, the stone scales would be the, the tribe that has uh, general run of the precipice quarters uh, sewers. And, Will, what is a kobold? Uh, well, you can roll an arcana for that. Or a nature. Mm, I don't have arcana. I can roll both, but I'll roll arcana. Wait, was this, a, was this an in-game question, or was this like a explain for the audience question? What a what an opportunity to do both. I rolled a 21. For so that's just good value. 21? Yeah. Uh, okay, so I will take that, but I misspoke. It's actually going to be a, a society. Um, that's the same roll. Perfect. Hey! Yeah. Uh, so hey kobolds yo. are small uh, reptilian creatures uh, that are known for being very, uh, like having a lot of ingenuity um they are very uh like proficient in like making traps uh very good with like uh hit and run kind of of tactics they are uh intelligent tribal groups um that work very well in like pack tactic kind of situations uh and they are generally uh they are essentially long distant relatives of dragons um, when you say they prefer packs, what is like the ideal pack size for a number of kobolds? Like how many kobolds would you expect to see? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it can really be anywhere from a couple, like three to five to tribes of 60 plus. Um, it just happens to it happens to depend on uh, how unfortunate you are when you stumble into them. Because I'm wondering, like, how many kobolds are we running into? Like in this in this instance, it's hard to say. I'm, and five five minkai, I'm assuming humans, are being held hostage by a band of kobolds. I mean, that would probably well, no, take a sizable number of kobolds, no? Wait, I, I, no, the minkai just went missing, and members of the crew hold, are holding other members of the crew hostage. Was that incorrect, Will? I thought that the minkai were they went missing, and as a result of that, like pandemonium broke out among the crew. So what it sounds, uh, what she's basically trying to say is that uh, within the past month, uh, about two weeks ago, apparently five members of the Minkai delegation went missing. Um, they were all stonemasons, uh, so skilled workers. Uh, the 
Dragonfly Pagoda was supposed to be fully constructed before the Radiant Festival, but they've run into a number of roadblocks due to a number of things, not all of which is related. But losing five Master Stonemasons suddenly really set back, so they hired on additional workforce, the only people they could really find uh, to run gotcha. more shifts were these kobolds uh, who have now apparently taken slight at something and held the building and presumably other workers who were in the building hostage. What she's asking you to do is go oh, and figure out okay. what's going okay. on as it relates to the people who went missing. But that probably also entails figuring out how to resolve whatever's going on there now. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah, I did not get that the first try. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah you know. Um, cool. Shark is good to accept and go to bed. He wants to get going on an adventure. Yeah, Penumbra is good for the same. Also, I'm still at half hit points, so I'm excited for some healing. <laughs> yeah. You don't deserve um, healing. Um, Twinkle Toes, would you like to go tell our, our lady friend that we accept her uh, invitation and we await for more information? Yes, absolutely. I would love to. Um, I go right over here. And I sit back down and I turn to Isabella and I say, we accept your proposal. And in return, I would like to buy you a drink. Well, that is very generous of you. Um, sure, why not? And she like holds up her now empty uh, goblet of wine and uh, Belberry grabs from under the counter what looks to be a nice uh, bottle uh, aged uh, decent uh, she like pops this cork that looks ancient and pours a little bit in I um, appreciate that that was two gold glass <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding it's five silver oh my god <laughs> Oh, wow. Uh, Almost got it. It is a nice wine, but it's not that nice. Twinkle, so I was going to duck out on her. Oh, on yeah. her. The, the first chat bar the table is a venture, but uh, oh, probably not her first. <laughs> we I... did just spend a whole episode shopping, so we're pretty cash poor. <laughs> and we uh, and we sleep in this tavern, right? Like, we stay here. This, uh -huh. this establishment does not have any bedding. This is purely oh, no, a I... tavern. Oh, no, we're, we're staying in our own abodes, our own places, yeah. That's right. Um... Okay. Uh, Shark, turn... do Shark and I leave? Yeah, I think that's. I turn right. to the other guys and I'm like, "Any of you joining us?" No, I mean, uh, I'm quite spent. It's, it's a long day tomorrow, I'm sure. We should I be have parting, my, I think. I have my own booze at home uh, that I do not have to pay for, so. Uh, enough, we... uh, if the doctor stays, I will stay. But I, I hope he will let me sleep at his place again, because uh, I'm trapped I have a place right, right around the corner that you can crash at if you need to. Uh, okay, and Bastor orders another drink then. <laughs> Don't have to tell him twice. <laughs> uh, the doctor actually looks a little sheepish at Bastro and says, Bastro is probably for the best, because I don't know if I plan on going back to my place. Uh, Twinkle Toes, I know this might be presumptuous, but may I crash as well? <laughs> Yes, um, I should warn you, there's no furniture except my hammock. I have uh, a pot in my backpack. That it, uh, Dr. Forsyth, okay. a shark oh, calls from the... Oh, I do have a tomorrow as well, Doctor. So, shark That's calls it. from the, uh, the hallway and says, you're all welcome with us as well, of course. And but just kid continues walking out. It's like trucks as all the, the way door. to the puddles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Our, uh, <laughs> Shark's apartment is like four miles from this bar, if not more. So the, also... the, doc will, the doctor will hang around just because he's now agreed to crash with Twinkle Toes, but he's not planning on doing a lot of drinking. Sure. And you all continue for uh, for some time. Um, probably not going too crazy since you do have decent work, uh, but. Uh, the conversation continues, and eventually Bellberry uh, comes up to uh, to Twinkle Toes as she's serving you another drink, mm -hmm. and uh, Bellberry says, "Now, nah, I hear you might be working with uh, Isabella here. Is that right?" That's right. Yeah. Oh, she is just a darling lass. She actually helped me find my nephew back in the siege when he got lost. It was really. Yeah, and that's why she's here most weeks. 
Really helped me out, so I gave her free drinks for life. Free drinks for life? <laughs> well, you can't what? go and replace my nephew, you? can you? But she yeah, found him. No, absolutely she found him in the middle of all that nonsense with, with the Whispering Tyrant and the Undead, and, well, he's still alive and kicking. And for that, I am eternally grateful. Makes sense. She's she's quite a woman. She's very good at her job, you know. Helps people find their loved ones. Gets them back home. And, well, she seems to do pretty well for herself. But I think it's just wonderful. Do you you know what her insignia means? Oh, I couldn't tell you. I haven't the faintest. She's never talked about it before? Well, you can ask her yourself as she points to Isabella, who is still Oh, shit. I I forgot... (laughs) <laughs> no, never mind. Doctor is silent. Uh, I mean, if anybody didn't, I think the doctor and Twinkle Toes were the only ones who attempted to recall knowledge. Anyone with society is more than welcome to try. I'll roll a retroactive one. Uh, I ooh. am awesome at society. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Oh, okay. I got nine. <laughs> what did you, What did you get, Pastor? I got a nine. Oh so yeah. I don't wish anything. <laughs> shark. 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 Oh, shark. Smart boy. Uh, you recognize that the specific symbol does not uh, refer to anything specific that you are aware of. However... It is reminiscent of another symbol that at some point in your travels you might have either seen or heard about. Um, But it does jog your memory. The symbol itself is reminiscent of what you believe to be the symbol of the Hell Knight Order of the Torrent. What? Hell Knights. Oh, was not expecting that. Okay. All right. Mm. Wow. Um, do uh, I know anything more about the Hell Knights or the Order of the Torrent? Um, specifically about the Order of the Torrent? No. Uh, from But what you do know about Hell Knights is that they are a lawful set of orders of these knights uh, and each order takes on essentially a mission Um, and in some way about with their mission uh, their mission is aimed at establishing law uh, establishing order and in doing so um, emulate the uh, the lawful realm of hell um, hence the name. And while yeah. not all of the Hell Knight Orders are explicitly evil, and even members of a an order that is known for being evil aren't necessarily explicitly evil, there are some Hell Knight Orders who have made a rather evil reputation for the vast majority of the Orders. Got it. Uh, there are major orders and then there are a number of minor orders you are not familiar specifically uh with much about the order of the torrents other than maybe coming across uh maybe a depiction of several of the crests of various hell knight orders uh it might have been how this memory was triggered but you would assume that this is probably a minor order of hell knights as opposed to one of the main orders so shark remembers this uh i i think i'm i think i envision it as like shark and bear walking like three miles home to the puddles and at some point it's just been quiet for like 15 minutes and shark just like stops <laughs> and is like oh i knew i recognized it somewhere bear blast you know it. Brain, 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 brain blast, blast. <laughs> i've had a brain blast that's simple you you, you know it Yes, it is uh, of the Order of the Torrents of the Hell Knights. It's, well, Hell Knights. not exactly, but I don't exactly remember where I've seen it before, something like it. She, um, this became more interesting now that we know that the Order of Hell Knights are in 
Uh, I've never had dealings with them, but... And she did mention that she's returning missing persons, so I imagine she's not in a wholly evil Hell Knight order. Well, not the wholly order. evil, but perhaps wholly evil. Perhaps wholly, wholly evil, who's to say? It's just like the pumpkin once said. You yes. can't trust everyone. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Just after the ghost abandoned him for the carriage driver. Ah, oh, yes. A great, a great what a, scene. What a moment. What a what an what an evocation of emotion. I cannot believe yeah. that Twinkle Tones did not recognize that this is a world famous reference. It, it, a common one. Spans Galarian, even not just Abistan or goblins. And shocking, we found three strangers who've never heard the tale of the ghost of the pumpkin. Unbelievable, truly. I mean, can can you imagine not having the trail of breadcrumbs that leads to... Uh, where does it leave again? What, 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 where does it lead once more? Uh, the trail of breadcrumbs... You mean in the, in the first act when the ghost is trying to find yeah. the pumpkin for the first time? The trail of yeah. breadcrumbs leads to the false patch, the false pumpkin patch, where... That's right. Where he it's thinks... Squash. Yes, to, I to the brim with squash, the squash patch. Yes, yes. Can, you, can you imagine not having this? Amazing. This is still going on. I can't imagine not knowing the allegory of the ghost of the squash patch in relation to the ghost and the pumpkin patch. But I'm, I shall, I shall worship and pray on this uh, Hell Knight information, and, and I will, I will think more about it later. <laughs> ben just gets up and leaves. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'm awestruck, genuinely. <laughs> uh, and that goes on for 21 minutes. While <laughs> oh man you all eventually make it back to your various um, places of rest uh, to a very deserved and very swift and deep slumber uh, despite the shall we say nighttime revelry that appears to be happening Especially in the Precipice Quarter, but all throughout Absalom, you all descend swiftly into a deep slumber and rise bright and early on the second day of the Radiant Festival. Charged with a, a new mission uh, and with some new information to pursue. What would you all like to do? What was the plan? Are you guys meeting up somewhere? What time are you guys getting wherever you're meeting up? What's going on? We'll be, we're, well, we'll... I yeah, roll ahead. out of my hammock and see the boys on the ground and I'm just like, oh my goodness. They are so adorable and enormous. I can't believe they fit here. Wow, I didn't think about this. Um, this apartment is for a very small person, and they are not small. Uh, you all are, like, in this halfling apartment complex, where, like, the doors are halfling size, the hallways are halfling size. You're it's, like, it's, the sh it's a hobbit hole. It's yeah, the Shire. You all but... are, like, <laughs> taking up the entirety of her kitchen and her living room each. Like I'm, like, trying to do my morning yoga, like over them because there's no floor space um yeah the, the, the doctor's like reading while you're trying to do this and he's like trying not to be in your way but it's impossible <laughs> does battle medicine work on uh that crick in your neck from when you sleep wrong does that <laughs> does that zero <laughs> that the whole day like oh, oh, oh. Give a good like your shoulders check. just kind of messed up the whole day like it's just uh, i'm yeah. not gonna be right till tomorrow <laughs> man. oh man imagine crit failing that uh chiropractic neck crack Oh my god! Oh. Oh, Di dying, dying three, roll a death save. Oh, yeah. um, god, I, uh, I think that I imagine we would have agreed on something because we're, I imagine you our, would have our, our, our characters are better organizers than the players are. Um, probably like what meeting up at, at Twinkletoe's apartment complex or somewhere near the Tipsy Tent or Tango or something like that. Yeah. We know where yeah. we're going yeah. to go crack some cobalt heads, right? We, we have the location. Or or negotiate peacefully, but yeah. Whatever we choose. To take. <laughs> However the coin flips, you know? <laughs> yes. So you all were told that this is happening at the Dragonfly Pagoda. You all would have known about this. This is one of the main and most anticipated exhibits of the Radiant Festival. It is a massive 
uh, construction project that is meant to house a number of cultural exhibits from the far off land of Min Kai, um, which is well, well outside of the inner sea region uh, where you all are currently located. Um, uh, it, it, however, has been suffering, uh, as I said, or as Isabella mentioned, from a number of construction setbacks. Um, not all of which, again, was related specifically to those workers going missing, but just a series of unfortunate mishaps, licensing issues, um, you know, uh, political and diplomatic issues have left this building incomplete, um, even on the second day of the Radiant Festival. Um, and as such, there seems to be issues arising, uh, which you all are being sent to figure out. All right, so once we all meet up, uh, I guess we just get going. Okay. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. yeah. So the Dragonfly Pagoda is situated near the hearts of the Precipice Quarter. Um, and let me actually bring up the map of the of Absalom for you all again here to see. Uh, she she told us that uh, Isabella told us that while she was doing while we were doing this, she was going to be looking at the the, the Grail Reamer, right? Like she's, she's trying like, to figure out what's going on with the Grave Raker. Yes. Yeah. Okay. With the Grim Reaper. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so there's this big open area here uh, that was, like, uh, intended to be a massive exhibit space uh, during the construction. It's right under the P in Precipice Quarter, uh, where the Dragonfly Pagoda construction site is currently located. No, no joke, which P? The left one or the right one? The secondary P. This one, okay. Yes. Situated... Like on that like town square underneath, or yes. Like that what large, looks to be then, almost like a park is like really a Times Square there. almost. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, All right. And it it's really a momentous occasion because it is the first major cultural exhibit, uh, and will be a permanent installation of Absalom of the Precipice Quarter as a Minkayan cultural center, and is pretty important because it's meant to introduce uh, Minkayan culture. Uh, officially and properly to the peoples of the inner sea region. Can we take a moment just to, to, to this map, man, this map, I just want to, I just want to take a moment to appreciate the beauty that is this full rendering of the Absalom streets. So it's, it's just so well done. I mean, like Absalom is such a cool place. And well, I think it, what like, it does really well is puts into perspective how big Absalom massive. is. Massive. Absolutely it's massive. A huge city. Mega New York it's the Times Three. The Boston say of Galarian. Yeah, like it is. It is so so big, and like I think that uh, what Second Edition did was flush out a lot of locations in Galarian and Avistan that haven't been really talked about. And I think Absalom is one of them. Where we, we didn't have a map of Absalom before, like this adventure path, right? This is like the first one. There, there have been maps, um, but this is like the first time that a full adventure path has been set in Absalom entirely. Uh, and it is, it has much more detailed information about the different places within Absalom, how the Absalom government works. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the first true full exploration about uh, Absalom, the what city at the these, center of the world. What are these microbial shadows throughout the Bay? Are those boats? Yes. So, one of the things is, uh, this city has stood for hundreds of different sieges across thousands of years. Uh, oh, they're sunken boats. Yeah, they're sunken. Sunken. And these oh, are wow. all the wrecks of the ships yeah, look at all from stuff. numerous wow. failed wow. invasions that now make up almost a barrier <laughs> reef. Wait, it's so cool. That's yeah. rad. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And yeah, so many of them on this like on this uh like archipelago up yeah. here. Yeah. A barrier of corpses basically. That's insane. Yep. so neat. Oh, and not, none of them really all that close to the shore. Yeah. This city has withstood 
numerous wow. threats and has never once fallen. Neat. Very cool. You all make your way to the Dragonfly Pagoda. Uh, but something strange Which appears doesn't... to you all once you uh -oh. <laughs> arrive. Unheard of. Yeah, crazy how Hell this keeps happening to you all. Uh, when you crest around a corner and really get up to where you can fully see this site of this Dragonfly Pagoda, this massive uh, construction undertaking. You see that there is a large group of people that are standing uh, outside, outside this front uh, doorway. There seems to be kind of two groups. One is a group of what appear to be uh, the Minkayan delegation. You see a number of people who are dressed in Minkayan garb uh, that look to be, um, whether they are ambassadors or uh, various diplomatic levels, uh, as well as um, craftsmen. Uh, and then there appear to be a group of local laborers, and they are in some kind of shouting match outside of the outside of the Dragonfly Pagoda, as you oh, no. get within eye, eye shot of it. Hmm. You see uh, one woman in exasperation uh, basically just storm off away from the main group and sit down on a bench uh, that is on this dirt walkway up to the un in uncompleted building. Incomplete building. What would you all like to do? Um, did, she, did she storm off? Wait, did she storm off from the Minkayan delegation, or is she one of the workers? She appears to be one of the de uh, the Minkayan delegation. Okay. Uh, Twinkle Toes, I, I think that you have the best people skills out of any of us, which may come as a surprise to you, considering I'm so incredibly personable. But perhaps you could talk to them and see what happened. Shark, did you just make a joke? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I I think so. I'm not sure. You really, you really need to work on your punchline, like your delivery. Um, but <laughs> I'll, I'll, thank you for the note. I will practice. <laughs> thank you. Um, sometimes it helps if you just like do it in the mirror a few times. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, this is good. Work yes. on your delivery. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Honestly, that that buys a mirror for his apartment. I'm ball. trying to put together a tight five, so this will be good content. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, so, Will, can you tell me again what we see? We see a woman who stormed away. Um, yes, so there's probably about 30 to 40 people who are okay. milling, uh, but they seem to be, like, broken into two groups, and where the two groups kind of butt into each other there are very clearly arguments going back and forth it's not violent by any means nobody's like throwing punches or anything but there's like very much a like controlled chaos going on as people are just shouting back and forth at each other uh mostly in common but every once in a while you hear just like foreign curses strewn about this yard uh as this is happening uh, you see a woman break away from the Nkayan delegation, walk up the pathway um, that leads away from the front door of the pagoda and take a seat on a bench, just flopping her head into her hands. She appears to be I... frustrated and done with whatever's going on. I go up to her. I approach her. Uh, she still has her, her head in her hands. It's just like de breathing deeply, apparently trying to recollect herself. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm so sorry. Uh, she like you... startles for a little bit, looks up at. Oh. Um. Yes. We were sent to help with things here. Can you please tell me what's going on? Uh, are you from the city? Uh, so <laughs> I, I live here. Um, we were we were sent to help, but um, 
I wouldn't say we're from the city. Oh, uh, I, w- I would be very surprised about that. We've had no luck with the precipice quarters, red tape, and nonsense civil servants. Yeah. Uh, and no, no decorum difficult. whatsoever. Uh, but you're here to help. Yeah. Uh, I suppose I can't turn down help at this point. Uh, you've heard about the situation, then? Uh, like, sort of. I- I'd love to hear your side of things. Um, we've sh- heard... Sure. We've heard a skeleton of the story, but... Um... Fair enough. My name is Ama Uomi. I am the delegation, the Minkayan delegation's chief architect. And this is my work. And she, like, sarcastically tosses a hand back at the half-completed building uh, behind her. Um, She says, And as you can see, we are on day two of the Radiant Festival. And it's not done. And the headaches that I have had continue to compile as more and more problems present themselves. We've had a number of workers go missing, and now the extra crew of stone scales that we hired to work the night shift has apparently decided to kidnap the non-kobold workers on the night shift and barricade themselves in this temple, refusing to leave, and now they are making demands. But, and we'd love to help them, but they aren't able to articulate what exactly it is that they want. So, so what demands are they making? Oh, just vast sums of treasury gold. Uh, things that we cannot provide due to them being under Absalom's jurisdiction. Uh, <laughs> they wanted us to erect dragon... Uh, temples inside of our pagoda. Uh, Things that we simply cannot do, and yet we have no way of getting in at the moment. And the city is... I mean, the Precipice Quarter is refusing to do anything about it, saying that they are unable to do anything without the Grand Council's jurisdiction, since this is a foreign matter. I'm running out of options, and quite honestly, I can use any help that I can get to this point. Bastro, do you have your trusty crowbar handy? <laughs> Bastro does, but instead he's going to ask the woman, uh, so you're saying that no, no one can communicate with these kobolds? There's a, a language barrier? It's not say? that we can't communicate. It's just their demands are ridiculous, and the vast majority oh, okay. of them I cannot, I can't grant regardless. Do you know And they change why every they... few minutes. Why do you they know why it? they did this? I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I again, their demands are absurd and ever-shifting and ever-increasing. And they have yet to specify even why they're doing this, but All right. I suppose well, we can get in there and at least help out in... Is there... You said the entire night crew was taken? All of the... All of the, the non... Uh, all of the non kobold members of the night crew were including some of our Minkayan delegation, were held hostage at the end of their shift. Or at the beginning of their shift, excuse me, last night. They right. went in, and then we sent somebody in to check on them. They couldn't get in. and Silence until this morning when they started making these ridiculous demands. And now the work crew wants to get paid, but we can't pay them because we can't have them working in there under those conditions. And so I have to deal with the crew, the day shift crew, and... Is that who you were arguing with just a moment ago? Yes, unfortunately, um, they showed up diligently for their shifts, but they can't get in to work on it, and so we can't pay them. And so they're upset with you because of that. All right, well, thank you so much, Alma. Um, we are going to see what we can do. Uh, does anyone else have anything else they wanted to ask her? I have Should one last question, it? actually. Uh, so they barricaded the front door. Is there any other ways to get inside the building at all? At the moment, no. Okay. 
So it's just that one entrance. At the moment, no. Well, I mean, we could spend a few days cutting a hole in the side, I suppose, but... Okay, no, uh, never mind. I, I didn't know if you meant that there was at some point, but now it's... All right, thank you. Let's go. All right. What? I think... Uh, What's the plan? The... I, I think the doctor, while this is happening, he approached the crowd and was just kind of listening to what was being said. Could I roll a quick perception check on the crowd and just listen in to part of that conversation and hear if there's anything useful, if they're literally just shouting, you know, let me in. Oh, we can't. Let me in. No, we can't. Like, is uh, there sure. anything? Go ahead and roll a perception, yeah. Okay. That's uh, a decent roll. Uh, 23. 23. Yeah, so the vast majority of the loudest voices that you hear are, like, workers' qualms. Like, you promised to pay us for today. Like, and then a response saying, you're not working, you, we can't pay you. Uh, where right. are we going to get jobs now? Um, how am I going to feed my kids? Um, but you do hear uh, a number of things uh, outside of that. Um, the... Minkayan Min delegation, there's a lot of commenting on how this is going to put them even farther behind. Um, but you do catch one snippet uh, where it appears two of the workers are talking about how it's really weird that the only members of the crew uh, who knew the people that went missing are now being held hostage. The members of the crew who knew those who went missing are being held hostage. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think uh, Forsyth will will like like tap twinkle toes on the shoulder and like gesture for the crew to to circle around uh, slightly away from the the woman sitting away from herself, and they'll share that and say there, there appears to be some sort of uh, maybe not so coincidental taking of those inside those they're saying that the hostages knew members of the delegation who went missing so that they, they, they were the only ones uh and he'll, he'll share the the conversation bits that that he heard that you said were relevant um mm. that, so that, not, think... that does not seem to be a coincidence that they're, they're, that smells of foul play well i mean it could be coincidental considering the Kobolds were the ones who replaced the stonemasons and so were the ones on the night shift and so naturally they would be the ones working together. However, um, I don't know, maybe they could be connected. Uh, it, it seems a little too convenient that the only ones who knew those who went missing are now inside. I suppose we'll find out once we get in there. But we're going to need to get in there regardless. Yeah. Nice so time. I repeat, Bastro, do you have your crowbar? <laughs> I just, I don't think we should be busting down the front door, you know? But let me, let me... Considering there's only one door. Bastro's going to take a, a moment to, he's going to send Peter flying high up to the, the roof of this building. And he's going to share senses with Peter. Are there any, like like ceiling windows or anything like that uh, like up top uh there are no skylights if yeah, that's, yeah. that's what, what you're I, asking about yeah, uh, yeah sorry, what yeah. about what about ceiling windows like any of those? uh <laughs> oh <laughs> now that you mentioned ceiling windows specifically uh there are 12 um <laughs> no uh no openings at all on the, on the no there are no it's not, it's not a dome. there it are no like, ceiling you know, lights however get it? yeah can you go uh, in the chimney the chimney can Not Peter the go in the ceiling chimney? lights. Um, Does Peter have to bring presents if he flies in the chimney? <laughs> I, I think he'll bring, that's he'll bring a few twigs. <laughs> that's only that's only professional. Like that's it's, it's how it is. Yeah, it's custom. Um, yeah. There are a number of incomplete uh, roofing sections along the top, uh, but the entirety of the inside appears to be uh, lit only by ambient lights. Uh, so it's hard to tell anything that isn't directly in line of sight or in the line of uh, light, you know, from uh, the ambient light outside 
you can't really see anything uh that's, that's uh, in there even if peter has dark vision like could he see what's in the shadows unless you're specifically flying into the place i mean peter's on like the roof and like he's just peering inside from the rooftop into whatever uh broken parts of it aren't are made yet i'll go ahead and roll a perception check for peter and do we know Ooh. what this building was supposed to be what are they what are they be a 12 a 12 uh yeah right now all you're seeing is a mismatch of um like construction materials pretty much only it's very bare bones only appears to be um like half half finished artwork and mosaics along the wall um like you can see exposed support beams uh but outside of like what is obviously an active construction site you can't really make anything else out uh, the Dragonfly Pagoda itself is meant to be a mixture of a temple and a cultural exhibit. Um, it uh, is meant to have a like dome as well as a large Dragonfly exhibit on it. Um, but at the moment, it is just... A, a hollow site. building yeah yeah and then so after that peter's gonna fly around the building are there any open windows or anything like that any openings at all that we could fit through uh let's see here i think we should rely on stealth before we just yeah, use a crowbar even though it's a fan favorite of being stealthy. A waste i of time. could excuse me if you if we need to be stealthy, I can be stealthy. Uh, yeah, we could have two teams, or split up the party is kind of a bad idea, too. It, uh, it does not appear to be... Uh, there are windows, however, the vast majority, in fact, all of them that you see, are stained glass windows. Okay, so yeah, none of them are open, got you. Uh, yeah, Bastard's gonna uh, come back to himself, leave Peter's conscious i guess uh guys we have two options uh we could crowbar our way through the front door or uh some of it we could try climbing to the roof and going down from the roof uh, I, have, I have a climbing kit in my bag so i know i could make it up there but i don't, I don't know about you guys um well, once we affix a grappling hook to the roof we can drop in like secret agents i too have a grappling hook so i uh, do too yeah Perhaps someone who, someone with the best uh, ranged attack bonus could make that check. I do have quite a good ranged attack bonus. Um, so if we want to do mean, that... I'm very, very good at throwing things far and accurately. If we want to do that, Will makes a secret check using your ranged attack bonus, and the result determines how well the grappling hook from the ceiling, from the roof, but we don't know how well it's going to hold. Keep in mind, this is in unfinished building just want to throw that out there if anyone wants to i eat not sturdy continue why are we not just going in the front door these kobolds are yeah. not violent and these creatures are not gonna kill I, anybody i, I, I yeah. suggest we admit, you know that? i suggest we at least try the talking or knocking on the door and and seeing if there's something else we can do before doing you know seal team six we don't know that, but we suspect that based on what A, Isabella told us by the fact that they have not done anything violent or even aggressive so far, and B, I think what... they'll become aggressive if we bust down the front door that they have barricaded. I'm personally so we, okay if they become we aggressive. Not first. I know, yeah, if we try negotiating first. I'm with Dr. Forsyth on this. If, if we try talking to them first, and then they're... And if they don't comply with us, then yeah, we could bust down the door. But. Shark pulls out a crowbar and says, just let me know if I need to use this. And he stands off to the side to let you guys talk. I, Dr. Forsyth, do you want do you want us two to go to the front door? Uh, I, actually, Twinkletoes should come with us, too. She's pretty good with diplomacy. Um, we could try talking with them. I to sneak that I can, I can talk to, I suppose. Well, there just doesn't seem much room for sneaking, according to our, our little flying friend over here. Um, it's, yeah, it's I, I, like it's it's the front door, or we break things. That's that seems to be the, the way it weighs in. And we're not good with breaking things. 
Well, I'm pretty good at breaking things. I, I think we're good at it, but I don't know if we want to try that first. I think it's best, yeah. Um, uh, I meant, like, not good at breaking things, but, like, good with breaking things. Like, yes. Oh, good like, at okay with it. it. I'm always okay to break things, and I think this is the best way to go about it. I, what, what do we owe these kobolds? They have taken hostage of a situation that they had no business doing. They are, are, are delaying workers and denying them their payments and denying, denying the city their progress. I, what do we owe these people that we can't just break down the door and, and, and stop them? I think if you all want to talk, you can try that, and if it doesn't work, then I'll break down the door. They've just play. been they've been trying to talk to them, and they've just been making demands after demands. And, you know, maybe, maybe, okay, you know what? Maybe we can try that too. Maybe I can do better than all of these other people. All right, sure, let's do You this. talk. If you fail, I'll break down the door. I like, I, it's a win-win. I like this plan. Yeah. Um, I feel this plan going towards the door breaking, but give us your okay. roll, Twinkle Toes. I'm very excited. <laughs> so you all approach what appears to be the main entranceway of uh, this building. And I misspoke when I said doorway specifically. Uh, there is a set of marble steps, beautifully carved, that lead up 10 feet uh, to what appears to be just like an uh, an arbor arbor area made of dark wood, which marks the temple's entrance. Uh, two red wooden posts rise up on each side of the staircase, uh, which are connected by an elaborate cross piece to create the impression of a gateway. And as you all crest the uh, precipice of this gateway. We're going to go ahead and take a break. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> so I will see you all back here at 845 Eastern. Thank you so much again for watching, uh, and we'll see you soon. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You wanted me to do the music, right?
Welcome back, everybody, as we continue to explore what's going on with this pagoda. Now, before we jump back in, I want to take a little moment to describe a little bit more about uh, exactly what you all are looking at here. Uh, especially because I don't think I did a good enough job when, uh, when you all were flying about with your little uh, uh, bird friend's eyes. Well, stop it. You're amazing. You did fantastic job the first time. Structure is massive. Um, and all around this uh, structure, you see that there is, uh, there appears to be a, only a single floor that has been, uh, at least on the outside, fully finished with this large, massive uh, earth and wooden support uh, foundation that has been built 10 feet up where the first floor then starts. And this is the, uh, the this, these marble staircase uh, leads up this earthen uh, like uh, foundation to uh, a wooden sliding door that is apparently slightly ajar. As uh, Bastro's familiar is floating around, you see these massive uh, wooden lattice works that come off of the main building uh, that seem to resemble uh, almost legs and wings, uh, massive wings coming off the top of the unfinished second floor. It appears that you all are walking up towards uh, what would be the tail of this massive dragonfly-shaped building. Cool. Did, did you say the door is ajar? Uh, the door is slightly ajar, but not fully. Not fully ajar. It doesn't quite yet identify as ajar. Resist, Jack. Resist. <laughs> However, it's still after this... This is this... my favorite joke, but that was a legitimate question. Like, the door is slightly open. The door is slightly <laughs> ajar. You um... see this wooden... What is Wait, it? I thought it was barred. I thought it was barred the whole time. <laughs> Then let's just walk in. Yeah. Let's let Will finish. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So this, uh, the outside of this first floor is this thick treated wooden wall that is like a lattice work. You see these uh, intricate cross beams going all over the place, but the beginnings of this, the second floor that is yet to be complete, you see uh, what appear to be uh, thin paper walls that are 15 feet. Uh, so the, the, the foundation, 10 feet off the ground. First floor starts at 10 feet, goes 15 feet up to the second floor, this unfinished second floor that has the makings of this paper uh, wall sections uh, beginning to come up off of the, the structure. Um, and you see that this particular door uh, is in fact ajar. The oh, the door room. that's two, almost two, like two and a half stories up? Uh, no, so the, the there's a door on the first floor at the end of the, you know, you know what? You know what? Why don't you guys Matt? give me your party Let's order? Go to the Why don't you guys give me your party order? Um, I, think, um, I would be towards the front. Yeah, me, Dr. Forsyth, and Twinkle Toes yeah, are the first I, three up front. We're the negotiators, per se. Right. So, the guys want to stealth back. up since it's a jar? I thought it was going to be like bolted shut or something. Well, I thought it was going to be a door, but that's just me. <laughs> um, <laughs> all, yeah, all you were told was that they were barricading themselves in. Um, as to where this barricade may be, who knows? Interesting. Okay. Uh, so we had Bastro, uh, the Doctor, and Twinkletoes. Bastro, Doctor, Twinkletoes. I think Bastro's going to be stealthing up to this ajar. Okay. I, I don't know that the Doctor necessarily wants to stealth. I mean, we have, like, we have no indication to think that they have been violent thus far. 
I, I, if we're gonna talk to them, there's no reason for us to be stealthy because we're gonna be knocking or like saying, what do, you, what do you want? I don't know why we need to be stealthy to do that. If we were planning on like, you know, busting in. Well, I mean, we, we don't, we don't know what's on the other side of these doors. So, so Twinkle Toes is gonna draw both her main gouge and her crossbow. I and then yeah. Penumbra. Penumbra's sure. got sling out for sure. Slinging Come a couple out. sling bullets in hand. Back. Okay. Her crossbow is also loaded. I think I think the doctor will draw his new short bow, but he's like he wants to talk before doing anything. Yeah, I'm with you, but that's just gonna have his uh, one of his scrolls out. Just in one hand, just in case. So you all. As I mentioned, there is this beautiful, intricately carved marble staircase that rises 10 feet off the ground to a sliding door. The sliding door itself appears to have maybe an inch, two inches of a crack on open. That's so weird. And this massive, yeah. beautiful arch of this red wood uh, creates this gateway. Will, can I check for any traps? Yeah, I was literally thinking that exact same thing, Emily. I'm going to do Good that. Call. Good call. I, uh, go ahead and tell me your perceptions, and I will do a secret roll. For oh, you. secret checks. Okay. Secret Not checks. Oh, 22. D did, did you hear the part about secret so checks? So go ahead. Yeah, oh, go ahead sorry. and give me your perceptions. <laughs> Searching Mind for traps. Secret checks. Is a secret check for sure. Plus, Percep uh, Perception is to find the trap. Thievery is to disable the trap. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Secret. Yeah. Secret. Yeah. Okay. Uh, those of you who are looking, you feel like you do a pretty thorough once over, twice over, three times over this marble staircase. You don't see anything that stands out or looks fishy to you. The doctor's going to turn over to Twinkle Toes. Oh, okay. Never mind. You guys should have control on the map. So go ahead and put yourselves where you want to be. Yeah, the doctor will follow suit with Twinkle Toes. Oh, uh, okay, well, he'll step here then. That's a good lineup. Okay. I'm fine you with this, yeah. Up to Looks this good. door. Um, and the, the doctor will try and, like, he'll whisper to Twinkle Toes and say, do you, do you feel good about this? Do you want to, to lead the way, or shall I? I think I've got this. And he'll 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 nod and not say more. Okay, we go in. Okay. So you open the sliding door and you see into what appears oh, I to be we were talking. <laughs> I don't know what's yeah. happening apparently. I'm sorry. I heard open the door, so I'm going with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm you see the door. I'm not no. knocking. Okay. No. Uh, a pavilion that opens up in front of you. The air of which is pleasantly warm compared to the outdoor conditions. Uh, and there appears to be heat that is radiating pleasantly up from the tiled floor. Uh, a large, uh, two large semicircular basins protrude from the thick wooden walls to the north and south, and there appears to be warm water that constantly drains away and is replenished by bubbling dragon head fountains mounted into the walls above them oh uh, to the mm. east and west you see latticed balustrades of fine dark wood uh, that demarcate the edges of the pavilion with a walkway that continues down the structure to the east and i'll just actually let you see what's so they going said on here. dragonfly and now they was going with dragonfly they went dragon and as you <laughs> see in in the corner there appears to be a single kobold oh boy who now looks to you uh as you open the door you here to negotiate you finally gonna meet our demands huh well, that's the intention, for sure, but we heard you were not all that up to negotiating. Mm, people no, keep we saying no, love, so we, we keep... would love to hear your demands. May we enter? Uh, uh, yeah, but stay over there. Stay, toward, stay towards the door. All right? And she, like, uh, pulls up a small 
uh, spear and sling in one hand. Uh, We're not here to hurt you, but we would all like to come into the room. We're just all going to step in here and okay. take up our space. Uh, gonna need everyone to stop moving, and I would mm -hmm. like Dr. Forsyth. What? To go ahead and roll me. What I do? Cobalt are good at setting traps, man. Do do do. A reflex save. Uh oh. Okay. I'm gonna bite this guy's head off. <laughs> <laughs> That's an eleven. That's probably a fail. Yeah. So as you step further in, after the kobold specifically asked you to stay over there. Uh, you feel. I did. He said, "Stay by the door. By the door." You feel the plate of the tile under your foot give and uh, press yeah. down. All right, I'm I'm on I'm on team. Bust in and take no name. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna bite this cobalt head off unless someone stops me real quick. <laughs> I, I I stop you, I guess. <laughs> the dragon head to your right went goes from just uh kind of drizzling oh, this no, heated fire. water. Uh, down its mouth into the pool below and suddenly erupts in boiling water across you. Boiling water. You did, in fact, fail critically. Oh, what? no! Oh, With no. an 11. How is an 11 a critical failure? I'm, I'm killing everyone. I'm killing every <laughs> single person. <laughs> DC 21, that's crazy. Like no. Everything. Uh, at least DC 21. You take... Uh, what? 12 points of fire damage as you are engulfed in this boiling water. Uh, as the trap goes off, the kobold... Oh, wait, how much damage? How much damage? 12, 12. points of fire damage. God, that's uh, The kobold what the heck? books it back. Stop right there. Wait. We are here to talk. Uh, We're not I here to fight. No, I, sh I shoot him. I shoot yeah, my... Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and Trump roll initiative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, I get, shot shot <laughs> Do uh, I get one shot? No. It started running as soon as it saw you step on the trap. And you were blasted and engulfed in flaming water. <laughs> oh this my is, god. This is the messiest session of all time. <laughs> we just walk in, first thing happens. Dr. Forsyth just gets blasted. Yeah, this board. whole like, <laughs> opportunity for negotiation was Negoti not negotiation exactly... Negotiation out the window now. <laughs> Honestly, Dr. Forsyth was like, let's go in, and they were like, stay by the door, and he was like, no, and then like, it was over. <laughs> let's go in. I want to go outside the door. <laughs> You're not by the door. You're literally not by the door. You see how the four of us are by the door and how you're not? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, shark, go ahead. 13. 13? The number? 24. 24. Dr. Forsyth. 20. 20. Uh, Bastro. 14. 14. And Twinkle Toes. 17. Seven. Teen. Uh, this creature was here. And why don't you uh, roll up some battle music for me there, Ben? Uh, I know Sorry, you're uh, gonna still I'm stinging, too busy for but, alive. Uh, <laughs> being boiled alive. But, you know. We have health potions now. We have a bunch of stuff. Okay. We don't have a lot of stuff. So this creature, uh, as you step on the plate, it, it knows it's coming. So it starts just booking around the corner. It doesn't see any good coming from this. Uh, and it'll get to here. The door is closed. It will open the door with its second action. And then another move action to go in. Yeah. It is now the numbers are. The number, what would you like to do? Yeah. Mm. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, 
25. Straight across that, that foyer into the hallway. And if I could have this um, kobold roll me a will save, please. Will save. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, well, say his will say. Ooh, uh, fourteen. Fourteen. That's a failure. Okay. You take uh, four points of mental damage. Oh. From my from my daze. Daze. Is he also dazed? I was hoping for the critical fail in which he would be stunned one, so he could stop running away so quickly. But a normal success is just damage. Yeah. He he failed. But yes, a failure is a failure is full damage, which is my spell casting modifier, which is four. And that's my turn. Okay. After... He'll kind, of, kind of shout out, we want to talk, but not where traps are available. Please just come back and we shall have a conversation civilly. You say after blasting it in the brain. After I hit it in the brain with my brain. Okay. I just I just double checking. Um it seems more concerned with its brain's health uh, than talking to you now. Um, so, uh, after Penumbra is Dr. Forsyth. So I think the first thing Dr. Forsyth does is like just release an arrow in panic and like shouting because he's 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 boiling alive. Uh, so it's like ah! and like just fires blindly. Um, <laughs> After taking nice. more than three fourths of his health and damage, um, how much should a number take from that from that errant arrow that you struck into his backside? Is that four points of damage? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'll say it just takes an action to compose himself, and then he's uh, he's just gonna go second action five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 25 and he's gonna, he, having heard what Penumbra said he's gonna say time for talk is over and he's gonna shoot this kobold again okay. um go ahead and roll it so that's a natural two of course because I'm, bo I'm, bo I'm boiling alive so that makes sense that's my turn all right uh this kobold that you were attempting to talk to is like screaming as it's uh running back uh, and from behind one of the pillars steps out another kobold who is going to uh, let's see what is he going to do he's going to take a pot shot with its crossbow at Dr. Forsyth Dr. Forsyth had uh, two deer AC for some cover there uh, between, All right. uh, well, we'll get to there in a second. Uh, ooh, that is definitely, uh, 17 to hit? Miss. Miss? Okay. Uh, it is going to spend an action to reload. Um, and then it will use its final action to take a little step back to here. Where did he come out from? Uh, he was stealthing. Um, oh, okay. And you so all behind this, this yeah. pillar here, yeah. Correct. Uh, gotcha. Okay. He was hiding uh, when you all entered. Since he heard the trap go off. Next up is going to be Twinkle Toes. Oh, we were so okay. Okay. Wait, very, very super muted. I'm good now. Okay. Um, I'm going to go. Five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. Twenty-five. Oh, I'm trying to go in. Go, like, in, like, scoop it around. Yeah. yeah. You have to like around. Okay. Swoop yeah, around. Your doorway. <laughs> there you go. Roll 20 can be awkward with doors sometimes. It's really the dynamic lighting bars yeah, that yeah, get you. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm gonna go mm -hmm. five, ten, fifteen, twenty. 
25. Okay. Two actions. And Third as, action. as you get up there, you see uh -oh. uh, standing directly behind the pillar to your right is Point win. another kobold. Another kobold. Do we know how many of That's them there three. are? There are, in fact, three kobolds on three kobolds game show. D Dr. Uh, uh, we did it. We have found the three kobolds, and we're close to finding the heroes of Absalom. We're almost done with the show, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. It's been really fun. A couple more sessions, and we're there. Then you can all get back to your Sunday night. <laughs> Third action. Um, uh, Twinkle Toes is going to try to fascinate this kobold that she has just encountered right in front of her. Can you fascinate all three of them or just the one? Her form. Just, just the, the one. one just right the one. Now. Okay. The one, right now. the one you revealed. And this is against Will DC, correct? Correct. All right. And I will continue to ask that until the end of this game. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna hero point that. Do it. Because I rolled a two. Bold. Oh, gotta be good hero point economy. Bold. <laughs> that can only be good hero point economy here. Oh no. Natural one. Oh no. Natural one. Oh. oh no. Hey. Hey. That's no. positive hero point economy. That's good hero point economy. <laughs> Honestly, incremental progress so is better. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just have Emily Grace roll like three or four to ten more dice as she works her way up the ladder to like really good <laughs> rolls, you know? Oh. The more rolls you make, the more higher your chances are to be more better. That was so, Twinkle Toes' third it's action. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, as she action. steps up, finds another kobold, and attempts to fascinate it. But it seems a little more preoccupied with the fact that its friends are getting brain brains blown up by magic. Uh, after Twinkle Toes is Bastro. All right, uh, first action, Bastro's gonna look at Shark and uh, he's gonna say, I hope you brought an appetite for Cobalt because I guess we're just going in now. And he's gonna stoke his heart. So now you get a plus two to damage. Second action, he's gonna, he's gonna stride. Five, 10, 15, 20, get in there, thank you, 20, uh, <laughs> he's gonna stay there. Third action, he's gonna cast shield on himself, and okay. that'll be my turn. After Bastro is Shark. Oh, did, the doctor did go. Uh, uh, shark is feeling super stoked. He was already antsy to bite these kobolds. He doesn't like kobolds to begin with. Um, so, uh, now, given the opportunity, he is going to just rush 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. He'll go ahead and go all the way to here. And uh, with his stoke, and for the first time with his uh, his hand wraps, he's going to go ahead and oh, bite. Baby. Bite at this guy. Big old bite. Do it. All right, let's see it. Um, that's going to be... A 16 to hit. 16? Unfortunately, does not hit. Ooh. Liar! <laughs> uh, I wish I was. I really do. That's three actions. That's the Three actions. Thing. Okay. So you run up, feeling so stoked. Um, you try to nom this kobold, but uh, it is a little too nimble. Uh, as you rush by and try to bite it on the backswing, it manages to step, step to the side. Now that you all are in here, you see... Uh, this atrium with a wide stone path uh, that leads westward towards a, another wooden archway. Okay. Um, you see these 10 foot tall wooden lattices uh, with what is going on? <laughs> I just got, I got anal about not revealing the black parts. Gotcha. <laughs> Just all of my screens just started lighting up, and I was so confused. Uh, I wanted to see the outside of the building. You see uh, the a variety of like exotic flowers that have been planted all throughout this area, uh, and at the eastern end of this atrium, wide marble steps that ascend up another ten feet uh, 
torrents, two large wood and bronze doors. It is the first kobold's turn, the kobold that tried, really did, to, to negotiate. Um, really, oh, really gave yeah, it its really best. Hard, yeah. Yeah. Really uh, gave it his all, yeah. I realized like, that... I said, said, stand in the doorway, a trap goes off, and he gets spooked because apparently they don't know where their own traps are, and then runs out of the door. The kobold did warn us. Actually, really the kobold gave it his all. You... <laughs> Well, it's not going to be like, hey, there's a trap there, by the way. Why not? Why not? He was willing to negotiate. From a safe distance. Either way. I a doorway. I just happened to be the one who didn't have five room in the doorway. And I hope you remember that next time. I'm having so much fun, you guys. It's going to try to stab. a really good time. It's... <laughs> We're like, hi, can we enter this hostage situation? And he's like, yes, just stay by the door. And Dr. Forsyth is like, all right. And then scrolls right into the room. Like, Which door did you mean? It goes across the hallway. Just to the other door. <laughs> the kobold is going to try to stab Shark with a sword. It's that simple. Uh... <laughs> Natural, natural 20. Oh my I... god. Oh, oh my god, okay. This couple, oh. I've never wanted a creature more dead in this game. <laughs> I don't know what we so expected cool. when we created three polos kobolds gaming, other than the first time we see kobolds, they're the most vile, <laughs> disgusting, awful creatures that I want to murder more than anything in the universe. Uh, six I'm... damage, slashing to Shark, as this sword comes ripping down across your shoulder. Uh, it's gonna try once more upon the breach, uh, to hit. Uh, how's a 13? That's a Mios. It was close. I feel it. I feel it in my gut uh, that that was just right there. Me off. Uh, Me off. It is then. Hmm. Swing again. Roll. Cobalt, why don't idiot. you? Why, why don't you, honestly? Yeah, come on, idiot. Idiot. Just do it already. It's actually going to use an action called Hurried Retreat since it is currently next to you. No. Next to an enemy. It's Little baby. 5, 15. 20. 25. 30. So there. That fight is That's the end of its turn. It off. is now Penumbra. Um, Penumbra is going to spend three actions removing a couple of sling bullets from his pocket and imbuing them with some magical energy. I don't. Big turn. I don't. I don't like where this is going. Casting of magic stone to create three magical sling bullets. Okay. That's all three of your, all three of your actions. Oh yeah, it's all oh. three. It's it's one action per sling bullet, so I make oh. three sling bullets with three actions. Interesting. Yeah. And then you hit like a yeah. truck for the subsequent three turns. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. After number is Doctor Forsyth. Doctor Forsyth, you have second degree burns covering the right side of your body. What would you like to do? <laughs> you are so muted, my friend. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, this kobold would have cover, correct? From you, yes. Actually, no, it is up, like, almost the entirety oh, of the 10-foot steps. Cool, so, cool, cool. And, and sh put, uh, Shark is not very tall, so. Right, and, and yeah. Okay. How dare you? So I'm going to I'm gonna <laughs> you tall for release God, my short yes. bow a shot at this, uh, this kobold. Like, see a try, buddy. Actually, first, first... The doctor's going to take a second to compose himself because he's been filled with rage, much as Ben has been filled with rage. As <laughs> um, Dr. Ben and, has been infused with rage. a more iconic duo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's going to attempt to devise a stratagem to see if he can place this uh, arrow in a precise plot place to really damage this kobold. Okay. Or if it's been died. See what you uh, got. Yeah, I think the head is a good place to start. <laughs> And that's a crappy roll. So he's going to realize that this short bow in this situation is not great. So he wasted an action. He's going to drop his short bow. Second action, draw the silver short sword that they found in, um, nice. in uh, uh, the menagerie. And then third action, he's going to really quick battle medicine himself. Good call. Okay, Good there, call. It is. there it is. Uh, all right. 
as Dr. Forsyth uh, draws, readies the silver nine, sword. Nine points of healing. And hurriedly applies salve and burn ointment to the right side of his face. Uh, it is now uh, this kobold's turn. Right here. This kobold would like to, peeking up around the edge of the staircase, pop a crossbow shot off at Twinkle Toes. Make sense. Uh, 16. Nope. No. Okay, it's gonna reload right. and try again. Dirty 20. That'll do it. Just like. Wait, yeah, that's actually shocking. What the heck? I rolled really well Dislike. in the second one. Where's my dislike button on Facebook? Dislike. Uh, that is three points of piercing damage as the bolt grazes across your no. left arm. Uh, that is the end of its turn, however, which means it is now Twinkle Toes, your retort. Excuse me, sir. We just came in here to talk with you. Um, I'm hoping I can make that into some sort of performance. <laughs> I'm gonna say how much, how much skirt no. flourishing are you doing while you talk about it? <laughs> but you're more than a welcome lot, to either sing lot. or dance for a performance check. It, it, it was definitely sung um, and danced at the same time. What are those? Um, what are those instruments in merengue that are the the like almost um, castanets? Castanets, castanets yeah. yeah. Excuse me, sir. We are trying to have a negotiation here with you. <laughs> like, flamenco dancing. Uh, and which Cat creature are you trying to fascinate? Time. What'd you say? Sorry. Which creature are you attempting to fascinate? The one that just hit me. Okay. With the arrow. Go ahead and roll it. All right. As the. Okay, so my wire hit the die, so I'm going to get that out of the way. Ah! Crack die. Crack die. <laughs> roll the exact same thing now. Um, it's gonna be a 14. 14. Unfortunately, the power of your spoken word is falling upon uh, uncultured ears. Um, Fair enough. Um, I'm good. Well, um, I'm gonna continue to do some um, some more. It, it's gonna be more poetic this time, but mm -hmm. it's gonna be. I'm gonna start lecturing him about. Um, you know, wait, wait, I want to hear it. I want to hear the it. The errors of his ways. I cannot, I cannot freestyle this. One poem, of these days, I'll have you gonna be. recite days. a poem in iambic pentameter. Uh, oh, gosh, <laughs> I'll do it. What? As improv for your fascination attempts. The urge is just to do that. Oh, as we all can do. Can you imagine? Anyway, that's going to be a uh, 19. 19 will do it. Oh, come on. Uh, and oh, whereas right. the spoken slam poetry didn't quite tickle his fancy, the more elegant haiku that you draw forth uh, is able to successfully uh, engage the quiz inquisitive mind of this creature. Panake! Panake! Got the panake! Uh, you yeah, love panake. to see it. And what would you like to do with your third action? I would like to um, then stab this dude to my right with my main gouge. Okay. That's gonna be a, um, a, a, um, a 13 to hit. I don't a 13, know. unfortunately, your main gouge uh, doesn't quite slip all the way around this statue. Uh, and skids off the side of its leather armor, not quite dealing any damage. Uh, with the end of Twinkletoe's turn, so we're going to roll around to Bastro. All right. Uh, Bastro, first action is going to sustain the spell, stoke the heart for shark. Keep him stoked. And so stoked. the next two actions, he's going to place hand, his, both his hands on Penumbra's shoulders and be like, okay, Penumbra. You got to strike uh, true and strike hard, and he's got this. At, for those two actions, he's gonna cast guidance and also stoke the heart. I knew it was coming, my yeah. boy. Nice. So now you're you're a cannon, basically. So let's go. Let's, let's do it. And that's, that's I am really artillery penumbra coming in. Definitively oh, scared. <laughs> uh, is that the end of Bastro's turn? Yes, it is. Bastro, lights penumbra up with uh, holy energy. 
Uh, you feel guided. You feel stoked. You feel so ready to go. What did the sharks do? <laughs> uh, all right, sharks gonna run up here. Five, 10, 15, 20. Okay. 25, I think he's gonna block the door, the store with his body. Fair enough. Uh, and he is going to bite twice at this guy. Ooh. First bite. Dang it, miss on the first one. And no, I'm hero pointing. I'm hero pointing it. There we, oh, there we go. There we go. Give me all so of your hero do. points. Do Roll a seven. 16, so that's Let's gonna be go. a 24. There we go. A 24. Four. That hits. Let's oh, go. Yeah, that hits. Alrighty, so that's going to be uh, 12 points of piercing damage. 12. This I'm creature had dope, bro. exactly 12 hit points left. No way. <laughs> so you chomp oh down on its God. arm and do one of those like, uh, just like gnashing, thrashing, uh, ripping chunks out of this thing's arm. And it almost like a shark. Goes, Exactly. <laughs> it goes limp to the ground. Almost, not quite, but almost. <laughs> yeah. This thing Roll is now <clears throat> unconscious on the ground. Uh, you got one more action, actually. Yeah, he was going to bite out with his second action, and since no one's in range, uh, he'll use that as an opportunity to intimidate check against the remaining... I don't know how the, technically it works. I think I might only be able to target one target with an intimidate uh, It's going to be one target. Uh, yeah, I think but I want to basically tell them to like stop fighting. And also, I just one shot their friend with my mouth. <laughs> he makes a compelling argument. <laughs> you have like blood dripping from your... Yeah. I've got more <laughs> yeah, it's called scale. <laughs> maybe, can I make maybe a diplomacy check and... Uh, it is, it is a, uh, two, two, intimidation. You wouldn't be able to make a diplomacy if they're hostile, which they are. Yeah, they're right. Right. Exactly. It's an intimidate action. Oh, like, uh, it's skill yeah. check. It's an intimidate Wait. skill check? Uh, right. To demoralize. Is that I don't know if there's anything. No, he's trying to, like, I don't know if there's like a rule for this. I think it would be sort of like a GM discretion sort of thing. Uh, do I'm looking here. Oh. You attempt to bully a creature into doing what you want. Oh, the intimidate. Yeah, he, he can't coerce. Yeah, an intimidate action the, is yeah. you have to spend a minute in conversation. The the, the action to demoralize. But to demoralize, yes. He's, yeah. he's not trying to demoralize though, but he could. You could do that. But no, that's what I want to get them. To I want to get them to stop fighting. I want to, uh, this is more of a this is more of a change attitudes. Yeah. Changing attitudes. Yeah. So yeah, unfortunately, without yeah, you're already in combat and they are hostile towards you. They're not just gonna like stop fighting because you tell them to. Uh, but you can there's definitely no mechanic that might scare someone into dropping their weapons. There not by, not there rules as written, but no. No, 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 they're, they're, they're like they're like ninth level barbarians. Yeah, there are feats yeah. to let you do more with intimidation. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, there's that seems odd. There's a feat called um, "Your Next," which is a lot of uh, a lot of classes next. you can get. That once you once you knock something out, you can like intimidate the next thing as a free action, and like yeah, you're you're gonna die next. But at okay. first level, I'm... you can't do it in one action. Okay. I mean, it well, be, it doesn't it seem be, like I can do it at all. It seems like I have to do it. Like you can't do it in combat at all. It would be exclusively GM. It's a demoralize like... action. Would be the only intimidate related action. Okay. Fine. That's, that just seems strange to me. Um, all right, so I'll try and um, demoralize this guy. Um, hopefully, you give me a circumstance bonus because I just bit his friend's head off. Um, but that oh, is going like to a be switch. a 12. 12. Uh, so that is fun. against its will DC. Uh, while they do look shaken, it does not look uh, demoralized. Um, but you are definitely seeing fear in the eyes of this creature as it is now stuck between uh, a rock and a sharp tooth. That's me. <laughs> Technically razor tooth, but you know. Are razors not sharp? Either way, uh, that is the end of shark's turn as you nom into one, then give a death glare to the other, uh, which will bring it down to uh, the last kobold here. 
who will, the one next to Twinkletoes is going to swing out with its short sword. Uh, it's going to be a 29, or sorry, excuse me, 21. Whoa. 21, 21, 21. <laughs> 21. I was about to say. <laughs> I wish it was a 29, but it is clear. Like, okay, so we're, we're fighting like 12th level samurai <laughs> go balls here. <laughs> We've stumbled into the wrong encounter. So it was 21. 21. 21. 21. That'll hit. Okay. Uh, that will be for two points of piercing as it stabs into you. It'll try again. Uh, 16. No. No? Okay. Uh, yeah, I might as well try one more time just for fun. Seven is not going to hit you. Uh, no. Which is going to roll it around to the unconscious kobold's turn who's going to remain unconscious. Uh, Penumbra. Probably wise. Penumbra feeling stronger than he's literally ever felt before is going to <laughs> yeah. drive 20 feet this way and fire off a sling bullet at the kobold in front of Twinkle Toes. Okay, so going to take a little bullet. bit of cove. I am going to hero point that. Okay. I'm three for five so far. Let's keep it rolling. Oh, I rolled even worse. Uh, a 10 on the first one's not going to do anything. But why don't I go ahead and take a second shot? It couldn't go any worse, could it? Not from my point of view. Da -na 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 -na. Uh, that is a, I think a 14. Yeah, 14 is going to definitely 14 miss. 14 is not going to hit, unfortunately. Oh, uh, yeah, two sling bullets magically missing. That sucks. This is rather Ripper. unfortunate as Penumbra strides up feeling confident as ever and throws two magical bullets straight into a stone statue. Oh, uh, no! Dr. Forsyth. The doctor, having drawn his short sword, is going to go 5, 15, 20, 25 for his first move action. And figures it's probably better to provide flanking than devise a stratagem. So second action is going to move to here. Okay. Third third action is going to attempt to strike out at the cobalt with Louise. still the short sword. Oh, that's a natural 19 for a 24. Ooh. 24 is a Ooh. hit. Damn. Go ahead and roll it. All right. Five points of slashing damage. Five points All of right. slashing. So you get a solid, uh, solid slash into the back of its... Uh, small little reptile legs. And it is flat-footed. It is. For myself and Twinkle Toes, at least. I suppose it is, yes. As it is currently flanked. Uh, yeah, so you do a number on it. Uh, is, that was all three of your actions? That was all three actions. Okay, this creature. First action. It's going to reload its crossbow. Second action, it will fire its crossbow. At Twinkle Toes. 16? Nope. And third action. We'll load it again. <laughs> oh, man. Gotta love crossbows. Uh, <laughs> twinkle toes. All right. First action. Stabby stab at this dude. All right. He is, in fact, flat-footed. All right. Hell yeah. That's going to be a... Um, it's going to be a 19... 19 Two hits. Hit. 19 hits, cool. yeah. Cool. Um, that's gonna be... Ah, right. oh, crap, die. That's gonna be five points of damage. Five points of damage, and this is with your main yeah. gauche? This is with my main gauche. And is that with the extra damage from having panache? No, that's... Yeah, that's with precise okay. strike. So, plus That's what two. it was called, thank you. Uh, Second so action. Oh, sorry. Yeah, just five damage. Yeah, it's, you yeah. stab it straight into its hip, uh, hitting the bone, and it squeals. This strange reptilian hiss. Second action, I'm going to fire my crossbow at this dude, and this is going to be spending my panache, so it is a confident finisher. Okay. Nice. It's going to be... Um, only a nine to hit, but 
I still do a half my precise strike. Damage, oh, right! So. Guaranteed damage! Yeah. Lit. So that's gonna be- oh my god, I rolled a six and a five, so that's gonna be Ooh. 11 points of damage, half, so five points five of damage. Five points of oh, damage. Right. That's- god, that's so cool that you Basically can Basically max damage, that's awesome. All right. Oh my god, that's so such a cool ability. He launched this bolt, he tries to duck behind the, uh, behind the stairs, but you managed to clip one of its horns with the arrow, or with the bolts, knocking it clean off. The end of Twinkle um, Toes. Third. Oh, no, that was my second action. Oh, I'm sorry. Third Excuse action. Me. Third action. I'm going to raise my main gouge defensively and get the shield bonus. And get the shield bonus. All right. And after Twinkle Toes, it is Bastro. All right. First two actions. He's going to sustain uh, Stoke the Heart for Shark and Penumbra. Yes. And uh, third action, he's going to cast Guidance on Twinkle Toes. Uh, he's going to say, Twinkle Toes, I believe in you. You can finish this per- uh, this kobold off. It's up to you. And uh, that's his turn. It's 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 up to you. <laughs> Even though he's surrounded. <laughs> uh, all right. Bastro ever being the supportive, uh, emotional support friend of the group, uh, continues stoking his allies. Uh, shark. Um, okay, Shark is feeling pretty daggone stoked. So, um, he'll go 5, 10, 15, and, okay. uh, bite twice. First bite, 17 to hit. That'll hit, yeah. Yes. Huge. Right. Right. Huge. Uh, ooh, 13 oh, points of damage. Oh, my gosh. And once more, you take a chomp. And the creature, you feel the uh, the thin bones of this small reptilian creature crunch and crack and shatter under the bite weight of your attack, and it goes limp in your mouth as you release it. It falls to the ground, unconscious. When, when Shark is stoked, he's doing one d8 plus six damage. Oh my gosh! Oh my so God. much. Level one, that's absurd. Unreal. You got one more action, there, bud. Um, I, I mean, I could walk over, but again, I would just be walking over, so, uh... Oh, I've got this one. I've now, yeah. I have now crunched two of his allies. I'll try to demoralize this. Um, just yeah. try and roll high. Um, I did not. Natural two for five. Intimidate. Um, it's, it's not even turn. paying attention to you. It's got its own problems right now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. It's uh, okay. The end of Shark's turn. Yeah, you only dealt 13 points of damage. I mean, it's tough uh, being being this strong. Uh, <laughs> it is the remaining creature's turn. Uh, it looks back, it looks forth. It'll try to take a stab at, we'll say evens is uh, Twinkle Toes. Odds is Dr. Foresight. Odds is Dr. Foresight. Class. Swinging out with a sword. Uh, 17 to hit. It's exactly. No way. How much health did you get back from uh, battle medicine? Nine, I believe. Oh, okay. Which was not full health. Ha! Deals one point of damage. <laughs> 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 Suck to suck. It's gonna swing again. <laughs> Sorry, I'm feeling I'm feeling very petty at these kobolds. How's a fifteen for you, bro? Miss. Fifteen. Uh, yes. one last strike, just fishing for the twenty. We're not going to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> Penumbra. Penumbra's going to fire the last magic sling bullet. Come on! I must roll better. I demand myself. Okay. Okay. 18 to hit. That hits. Hey, that yes. hits. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, so... I'm still stoked. So this is going to be six points of bludge dam bludgeoning damage okay and if i could have this creature um if i could have this creature roll me a will save please um i'm gonna say no uh, yeah but i said no way because okay. as you hit it you slam it right in the side of its uh scaly little temple it like rocks back and forth and there's a moment where it's just kind of like hovering off kilter slowly tilting 
and then just eventually falls and slams into the ground. Uh, you all are out of combat and out of initiative. Excellent. You see, you see Penumbra like trying to daze this creature. You see yeah. Penumbra like trying to daze this yeah. creature, and he's like, "Oh wait, no, this this is fine." This, yeah, this they're they're all stable. None of them are, are actively dying. Uh, they just went unconscious from shock uh, and pain. Um, I think well, we can establish like campaign wide that we will we will do that if will, necessary. Yeah, if if like, time available, that it. will happen. I mean, I have the stabilized cantrip, so they yeah. If, if, at any time, like at, at the moment, really, yeah. the only thing you need to worry about is sharks' criticals. <laughs> yeah, right. actually, yeah. I, I will bleed them out. <laughs> so, uh, in which case, it should be shark responsible for staunching bleeding. But yeah, we I mean that seems gonna, fair. We all know that's not going to happen. And then, if they do do die, shark is the one that is responsible for suffering the consequences. We just we just send him to Absalom Prison. That's fine. That's okay. You're you fine. walk up to this beautiful. Uh, dark wood door inlaid oh, with... Before we do anything with the door, uh, the doctor's going to uh, talk to Twinkle Toes and just say, Twinkle Toes, do you need, are you okay? Do you need any, 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 any medical help? Oh, um, actually, I, I am, I am a bit, um, stabbed, if you wouldn't mind, just, um... I have a yeah, slight bit yeah, stabbed. A bit, same, a bit, uh, if yeah. we're just going to be handing out medicine... Can we can we take uh, ten minutes here for me to to patch you up? Is that all right with everyone? And he looks around. I mean, yeah, we want to probably look through them. We can take ten minutes. I can do shark. You can do twinkle toes. And it'll it'll be the same ten minutes. And then Penumbra will loot. So, Penumbra will loot the bodies of the kobolds in the meantime. Uh, sure. The kobolds uh seem to be relatively lightly armed and armored, uh, but they are obviously, like armed for combat um they each had a crossbow a short sword uh six we'll say a total of about 10 bolts left between all of them uh and a set of leather armor each they also each had a snare kit snare oh, kit mm -hmm. i definitely Dark. take they're all so avid drummers. i had a hero point oh my god <laughs> I rolled a nat one to cure uh, treat wounds on you, but hero pointed it and I got a natural eighteen. So oh, four for five. Let's go. <laughs> uh, and Emily, em em you get you get eleven eleven hit points back. So let me give let me. I only let me... needed five. Thank you. You know, I feel okay, like it's a, a small victory if I get all of the hero points in any given session. But you get twelve points if you kill shark. Does anybody uh, want I any do. of this stuff that exists on these things? Well, what did they have? Yeah, again? I, want I wasn't listening. There are three crossbows with ten bolts total, three short swords, three heads of leather armor, and three snare kits. Not a whole lot of great stuff. The yeah. doctor is interested in the second snare kit, and that no one else wants it. None of it is a particularly fine quality or make. They're all just functional. You know, um, I think if nobody wants anything specifically, Penumbra will just pile a lot of this stuff. Take this ten minutes to pile it by the doorway, so that we can then take it out and sell it into the world, but not carry it around and become encumbered in the dungeon in this dragonfly pagoda. Also, uh, the doctor picks up his shortbo that he dropped. Okay. Shark picks cobalt out of his teeth. <laughs> Do you just want all three of the snare kits there, uh, big guy? I don't know if they actually like have any like use or wants at least one of them. I just want the one. I just want the one. Just want the one. Okay. I, I, the doctor takes the second one. Um, Shark says, uh, "Now it doesn't seem as though they're ready to negotiate. Perhaps we handle this hostage <laughs> situation as a hostage situation." And no. walks up to this door and kicks it over. Oh no! I want to do that, Greg. Dang it! Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is a large uh, wooden double door with bronze inlay. You see the intricate carvings of um, what appear to be vines and uh, exotic flowers similar to the ones in the garden around you that wrap up and culminate and kind of morph into this uh, almost uh, what looked to be a dragon with like plant features. Um the door wasn't locked uh, or barricaded. Didn't seem I like. All the strikes anyway. I want to splinter it open. Uh, you slam it, uh, and it goes flying back, uh, and you hear some of the wood crack as it slams into the wall behind it. Satisfying. Nice. Doc! 
Nice. That was not necessary. We already knocked out the kobolds. That we know of. If there was one right behind the door, then I knocked that one too. Four of the walls of this octagonal chamber are lined with low stone benches. Beneath each bench is a honeycomb of small built-in cubbies. On the walls, colorful tiled mosaics portray a tranquil stream winding through a deep forest, with tiny, half-hidden humanoid creatures peeking furtively out from between the branches, behind trunks, or underneath rocks. A large, ornate brass seal depicts a winding dragon uh, embedded in the center of the room's wooden floor. Soft, flute-like music emanates around the room, along with a gentle breeze, and you see bronze double doors to the west and east as the room's two exits. I wanted to roll a society on that stuff, but um, I rolled a natural one, so maybe someone else would know the um, Tianjia that's happening in here. Uh, Penumbra will give it a shot, but it's unlikely. Yeah, uh, it's a society check to recall knowledge? I don't know. That, I roll a natural one. Uh, yeah, it would be a, a society. Okay. Yes, I'll see if I knew more about the war. Oh, 24. Give it oh, yeah, no, that's better than that. 24. I rolled, Ooh, I rolled also 24. a natural 16, hey. <laughs> so um, a 20 for me. Dirty 20. Um, it doesn't appear to reference anything specific. Uh, it seems more just a, a natural kind of beauty type deal. The figures appear to be um, almost fae-like creatures, mm. um, but there isn't really it almost looks like uh like little keebler elves but you only see like small tiny portions of their faces as they're like just peeking out over the top of a stump or half of their face is peeking out around a tree are Um, they like comical are they meant to be like it's it's meant to be like not uh not comical but playful um they look uh, innocent. They look. Are like they meant curious. to be like disrespectful? Are they kind of like like making fun of the Fey, or is it more like? No, it just looks like they have um. Just like a, it's just like a fun little, almost yeah. like a uh like a Where's Waldo kind of deal. Keebler Elf sounds like a good comparison yeah. to this actually. Yeah. It almost well, it feels like a like... Where's Waldo. Yeah. Whatever. I would like to check this room for traps. Sure. Go ahead. Oh, wait. What's your thing? What's your thing? As I go back on my own. Plus five. Plus five. Plus five. You give it a good thorough search and don't find anything that appears to be dangerous to you or your friends. Cool. How does the girl look over here? The doctor wants to take a page out of both Shark and Twinkletoes' book and wants to burst through the door. I was going to say, Doctor, would you like to uh, do the honors on this one? (laughs) Yeah, the the doctor will like uh, like tap Shark on the shoulder, and say, "Shark, I would appreciate the chance to get back at these kobolds," and we'll will burst this door open. So once again, you find a beautiful piece of artwork uh, that is this wooden double door, made not by the kobolds but by the uh, Minkayan, uh, Minkayan embassy. Uh, yeah, and decide to slam it open. Whereas everything thus far that you've seen has been reasonably finished. Um, Obviously there's a lack of like too much substance outside of the walls being done and the garden and the fountains. Um, You kick this door open to find what appears if I can click the small line on wall 20 to be an entirely almost Oh, virtually oh, no. unfinished section. Uh, you open up to see a 20-foot tall ceiling and half-finished mosaics of a pastoral scene uh, on the walls here that give the impression of a grand hall. But the floorboards have been systematically torn up. Uh, you see, like, breaks in the middle of boards and this deliberate almost oh. maze like um uh sections here uh to slow meant to deliberately slow people so uh, the green parts here are like a drop that is a 20 foot drop to the wow. okay 
to wow. the to the ground oh, below. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, not do that. Yeah. yeah the pagoda's not... zigzagging support wow. beams and the bare earth twenty feet below are visible through the ripped up floorboards. Exits include numerous sliding doors on either side of the hall. Um, there's two doors, three doors on the south. Uh, there appears to be a set of stairs and a double door directly across from you. So many doors. So many doors. Uh, and then some doors to your north. Uh, and as we open up onto this disheveled uh, scene, that is where we're going to end for this week. As oh, yeah. finish. Oh, so many doors, though. You pull out 900 oh, doors. doors. You call it. That's crazy. I wish well, we had I'm time today to do them all. Thank you all so much for joining us once again oh, for our uh, seventh episode uh, of Heroes of Absalom. Uh, once again, go ahead and if you enjoyed what you saw, go ahead and follow us on Twitch as well as Instagram button. and Twitter. Uh, and keep an eye out on our social media for important updates, announcements, and really cool art posts. And once again, we just really appreciate y'all being here, spending time with us, and in engaging in our story that we are unfolding. Hopefully we'll see you again next week. Thank you so much for coming, and we'll have a good night. See you later. Thank you. Bye, peeps. Adios.